Okay, so we'll get started. It's um, 9.35 at a.m. on Thursday, the 1st of November, 2018. Uh, council meeting, open agenda, and uh, we've got apologies. We've got Councillor McPherson and we've got Councillor Mark Bunting. Uh, any other apologies? Uh, yep, um, all those four. Any against? Carried. Um, confirmation of agenda, um, moved by myself, seconded by Deputy Mayor. All those for, any against, carried. Uh, declarations of interest, there are no declarations of interest. Um, there is no public forum required for this meeting. Um, so confirmation of the Council Open Minutes, 9th of November 2018, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor James. All those for, any against, carried. Um, representation review, final proposal, item 11, I'll hand over to Democracy Manager and the manager who's been running this uh, all the way through, um, Leanne Jordan. Thank you, Leanne. Thank you, Mayor Andrew. Good morning, councillors. Uh, to my right, I have um, Council's Electoral Officer, Dale Lofsoski. And as you know, Dale's been providing um, expert advice on the Local Electoral Act throughout this uh, process. So we're very happy to be here today, if somewhat feeling a little bit nervous, funnily enough, at the end of 18 months to be bringing you what we hope is the final uh, step for your consideration in what is a very, very uh, important democratic function. So in front of you today we are as a report um, that summarises the uh, position post submissions on the um, Council's initial proposal which as you know was uh, to retain uh, the status quo for all the reasons that we discussed back at that meeting uh, uh, about eight weeks ago. So um, I think without any further ado, Dale, <laughs> we're happy to take any questions uh, that you might have on this process. I guess noting the one comment which the decision we're making today is whether or not to amend Council's original proposal, which you adopted, approved um, previously, on the basis of submissions heard. Okay, okay moved you. by myself, seconded by the Deputy Mayor. Uh, questions, Councillor Robb. Thank you, Chair. Um, uh, so that's the staff recommendation. Yes, yep. Um, my, my question is around um, the difference between an objection and an appeal. In paragraph 19, you state that if the Council's final decision differs from its initial proposal, any person or or organisation may lodge an objection to the proposal. I, my understanding of the motion is that we are not making a change to the council's um, um, original uh, proposal. So does that mean, is, is my conclusion correct, that no one could lodge an objection if this motion is passed? Those early that's I'm going to come to the yes. word appeal yeah, yeah. next. Um, so that's I'm correct. No, at no objections. Objection. Yep. So if we pass this motion, uh, any opportunity for anyone to lodge an objection is it's not a, is not available. That's okay. Correct. And and that kind of follows. And I think you probably answered the second part. An appeal, if if we do pass this motion, which is the original council proposal, um, then only those who submitted on that original submission may lodge an appeal. Correct. Is there any difference between an appeal and an objection? Is the appeal limited to what was in their... Correct. In their original submission. In their, in their submission. Yes. OK. Yeah. All right, thank you, Chair. Councillor Angela. Uh, thank you, Mr. Um, Mayor Andrew, <laughs> Mr. Mayor. Um, thanks, Leanne and Dale, for the report. Um, my question, uh, both of them actually, is to you, Dale. Um, can you give us? Can you give me an example of of the of one of the reasons the commission would change, come in, and then change the decision that we made today? 
the Commission have, have indicated that um, no one knows their community better than the council, local council. The Commission don't, do not purport to know local communities better than local councils. So they would be coming in looking at process right. and overall, at the overall process that was undertaken and the overall fairness uh, and compliance with legislation. And in your uh, vast experience of these types of reviews, you're highly confident, I'm assuming, of our process? I'm hoping of our process? Absolutely. I think your, your process has been very robust and your consultation mm. very thorough. I have no qualms about that issue at all. Mm. Mm. Um, it's been uh, interesting to me the huge variety of uh, requests from people and that's made it incredibly difficult. In your experience, Dale, have, have you been through another review at another territorial authority of where this, almost every submitter has stated um, something a, different. Yes, something different. I've certainly never experienced this before. I mean, the Commission will um, be, be confronted with the same issues council are being confronted with. It's like a scatter gun, they're all over mm. the place. Uh, so they're confronted with the same issue. How, do, how can you get a direction out of that? Mm. So I can't speak on behalf of the Commission. I, I do know that it's a new Commission, of course. Um, but they will be looking at the evidence and they will likely come to the same conclusion, well, it's all over the place, so there's no direction um, and therefore they'll make, draw a conclusion uh, possibly like council has and stick it with the status quo. Yeah, but have you seen in, in another council over the years that you've been involved in this work, have you seen such a wide variety of preferences before in this review, this type of review? Uh, I have. I can't recall mm. the exact council. Uh, and from, from memory, um, they suck with the status quo as well. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, we're moving to debate. Um, there is no debate. We'll go straight. There is, sorry, Councillor Angela. Um, look, first of all, I really want to thank Leanne and her team um, that have done a considerable amount of work. I realised I've only been through probably t a couple of these um, reviews in my time here, and this has been by far and away the most extensive, and I've certainly uh, been involved every step of the way. So I thank, um, thank you, Leanne, and your team, and also your uh, support of Leanne and her team as well, Dale. You know, when we go out and consult on most occasions, there's an overwhelming A position and an overwhelming B position, which makes it easy for elected members to sit round the table and weigh up um, those two opposing views. But it's quite incredible that through the, all of the surveys, the pre-consultation, and then this final formal consultation where 37 people submitted, um, still the massive uh, uh, polar views and everything in between of what people say they want. The only two things that have been consistent for me through this entire process are that people want a more choice of candidates and they want more diversity. And ironically, both of those two things are actually up to the public to deliver. So um, I'm supporting the status quo. My personal view, because of those two things that have come out of all of this process around more candidates and more diversity, I believe that more wards in the future will, will help with those two things, will help deliver diversity. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's been a really interesting process. I've gotten a lot out of it. And I think that the public, the take home message for me that the public is looking for change, but that's in their hands. Thank you. Councillor Paula. Thank you, Mayor Andrew. I think Councillor O'Leary has stolen my thunder in some, somewhat because a lot of the points that she made are points that I would have made. Um, she's absolutely right. Um, the staff have done an amazing job. Uh, the only disappointment to me is that, and I would like to thank all of those who took the time to submit, especially those who uh, went right through the process and came to speak to us, because that does take time and effort and passion about the issue. Sadly, however, uh, and it's out, out of our hands, is a much bigger problem. Public engagement in such issues is really low. Um, and so what we did have, as, as um, Angela has rightly said, is not much of a clear steer from not many people. And that's, and that's unhelpful. So if the public feel very strongly about um, representation, about who gives them the voice at council, uh, that needs to change. 
the public need to become more engaged with what we're doing at a submission level. Um, and that is going to be a much larger problem to solve. Uh, the two key issues um, from my point of view are how do we um, give the general public, the ratepayer, and our communities the best access to the most people who are making decisions on their behalf. I've settled on um, supporting the staff recommendation because there was no there were really good arguments about, uh, from those people who wanted wards at large and those who wanted more, la uh, more wards. Having said that, just because of the sheer numbers and the divide, there was no compelling argument to change from where we are right now. So if um, the result of this is that people feel a little bit disappointed, they'll need to reflect on how, as um, Councillor O'Leary has said, they can encourage a greater representation from their local areas and a greater diversity. We did hear some feedback from some parts of the city who felt that they needed a more local representation, and I invite them and encourage them to put up good people in the next election, which is only a year, a year away, and that will bring them the outcome that they want. But thank you again to staff for all your hard work. I think you'll be glad to um, move on and focus on some other work after this. And, uh, yeah, so I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Councillor Jeff. Thank you, Mayor Andrew. Yeah, look, uh, it's been a good thorough process. I think we all know that uh, it's gone over 18 months, as Leanne just said, and I feel uh, pretty fully informed to make a decision today. Um, so, Leanne, thank you for the work you and your team have done. Uh, I think uh, we're really well served by the work that you guys do. Um, I'm happy to support the motion today for us not to make any uh, changes to our original proposal. Uh, I listened carefully to the submissions and I read them carefully. And I see nothing in there to persuade me to, to differ from the original proposal. I thought submitters made some uh, impassioned um, submissions. Uh, and some points I agreed with, some I didn't. Uh, as has been uh, said, there weren't a lot of submissions for a, a city of 170,000-odd people, mm. 37, um, which to me doesn't indicate massive dissatisfaction with what we're doing and where we're at. Uh, I don't feel a lot of angst about that lack of submissions in this case. Uh, I, I usually do. But I think it just reinforces the fact that, we're, um, that we've got it pretty much right as it is. Uh, I think the variety of, variety of views that we heard was telling, as Councillor O'Leary said. Um, they were sort of on this side or they were on that side. Um, and to me, again, it shows it's not a perfect science, but I think we're steering it pretty, pretty well right down the middle there with two wards. Um, I, th I still think the two wards um, gives us the fairest balance at this stage. Uh, as far as uh, in that tension between ensuring we've got good representation on one hand um, but avoiding contrived boundaries on the other. I think our boundaries are, are pretty good with, with, the, with the river down the middle. Uh, with two wards, you still get to know, uh, as a, as a councillor, you get to know your area reasonably well and the, um, the constituents, they... Um, they can be assured that they're probably going to have a councillor who lives not too far away from them. Whereas with the at-large system, I still worry that that's not guaranteed by any stretch. And you could, as has been said in the last few months, you could end up with eight or ten uh, councillors in the northeast or wherever it might be. And I don't think that's healthy for our city. So I'm happy with that. The other aspect that I've em emphasised in the past is the, uh, the fact that I don't think it's fair to make people campaign for council across the whole city. Um, it's hard, especially first time up, to get the profile. Uh, it does cost money. There are a lot of good people out there who aren't millionaires, but they've got, it, they've got exactly what it, is, it takes to be a good councillor to make the decisions, but they shouldn't be penalised for the fact that they haven't got huge bank accounts. So I, I don't think we should make it any harder than it already is. Um, so in summary, um, oh, just, just in terms of the at-large system, I think some of the arguments for at-large are a little bit flawed. Um, I think the argument that you, can't, you want to be able to vote for everyone and you can't because they're in the other ward, I just think that's a little bit naive and unrealistic. And, and um, I mean, if you look at, we elect a government every three years, uh, you only get to vote for that, the candidates in your um, electorate. Uh, and a whole bunch of uh, list candidates spread around the country, most of whom you don't even know. 
and we still managed to get on with that okay. So I don't. I, I think this way you still get six councillors in your ward and a mayor at large. I don't think that's too bad. So um, in summary, I'm I'm very happy with this. I think we've struck a good balance. I think um, in the next three to six years we are going to have to look at it with the growth in Ruakura to the east, northeast, Rotokaui to the northwest, Peacocks to the south. We are going to have some different dynamics form. Uh, but we're not there yet, so I'm happy to uh, support this. Thank you. Councillor Siggy. Thank you, um, Mayor Andrew. I, I totally agree with what's been said so far. First of all, thank you so much to the staff. Wonderful job. I've learned so much through this process. It's been really um, eye-opening, and like everybody said, um, there was no clear uh, direction we could go with the people because, uh, yeah, there was such a diverse range of um, submissions. And so I will stay with um, the, the recommendation or with the motion. Um, but I, one of the things that I've learned through this process and being a, a new councillor here is there's um, three major, um, uh, well, <laughs> three major issues why people get elected on. And one is high profile through sports or media. The other one is, yeah, you have to have quite a bit of money to be voted on, or you're affili affiliated to a political party. And now I'm speaking for the women because obviously we are not that well represented on this council. New Zealand, 51% of New Zealanders are female. And <laughs> We, we haven't got enough women on this. Sadly, we are out of balance here. And, um, and I'm, I'm, that's why I really favor, I actually favor three ward system, but I'm happy to stay with the two ward system. And I tell you why I favor um, 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 a three ward or even four ward system in the future. Because women are usually known in their own community. They are, they're known through their kindergarten, through their school, their, their local, um, where they do their um, like um, Salvation Army, where they help out, where they do a lot of voluntary work. That's where they are known for a long time. And so for them to build a, an, an outside profile in any other area, um, is, is a whole lot harder. The other one is when it comes to money, it doesn't always get spent first on placards. It gets spent on shoes for the children <laughs> or food on the table. So um, just like um, Councillor Taylor said, not everybody has got a lot of money to spend on a, on a campaign. So for me, um, the more awards we have, I think the fairer we will make it for everybody. And... Um, and going at large, there were some really good arguments for that as well. But I have to say um, that that is that can be challenging for most people to to cover the whole city with to to build up the profile for that. Because in the end, it's about name recognition, and um, and that really um, that that. And I just wanna wanna give a chance to people that would be fabulous on this on this council as well, and they would add value to this council, um, but haven't got the chance because it's, it's too hard for, because of all three of these reasons, um, the no, not, no high profile, not enough money, or not, not affiliated to a political party. So um, I'm, I'm happy to stay with the status quo at the moment, but when it comes up again, and in future we will, we will be larger, <laughs> in the next 10, 20 years. Hopefully the future um, councils will decide to go even for uh, more wards so it gives people even a greater chance to, to, to get, get into council. Thank you. Councillor Ryan. <coughs> Thank you, Chair. I love quoting Tony Robbins and he says, it's <laughs> never a lack of resources but a lack of resourcefulness. And uh, Councillor Siggy gave us three good reasons, profile, money and political, but she missed a fourth option which was resourcefulness, which she did by knocking on 5,000 doors. So none of those three options applied to you, Siggy. So there is still hope. Uh, the representation review, just echoing everyone's comments, Leanne and team, um, tremendous job. You had a lot of um, tight rope walking to walk mm -hmm. in terms of balance procedure and uh, making sure that the process was followed uh, well and accurately. So um, well done there. Uh, based on what we've seen, though, a relatively low response and conflicting responsibility, uh, conflicting responses leads me to think there's no need for an overwhelming requirement to change. 
Equally, the lack of responses from the silent majority leads me to think that people are largely happy with the status quo. While starting this, I, although having an open mind, was keen to explore at large. However, given the challenges that I've seen through this process, both for the candidates and for the voters, I don't think it is actually fit for purpose for this time. I am satisfied that the status quo provides a fair and equitable means of representation that is understood by the majority of our population. Our challenge from here is to go forward and to enhance that status quo and con to continue our journey of increasing engagement. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Marson. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> with the exception of um, the perception of the influence of political parties, which I think with respect is totally overestimated in the sense that I, I, my own experience is that the voting is pretty political colour blind in, in some senses. I actually have to agree with the vast majority of the points made by Councillor Henry. Uh, and I, she, her points around um, the gender balance, we obviously have the worst gender imbalance, I think, for many, many years. And I must check out with the voters to see, probably literally go back to when we were forming the city in 1947 or 46, you see all the blokes there with their portraits. Uh, and I think that is obviously, because um, in an ideal world, you want a, you want a council of any city that is broadly, broadly reflective of the diversity of that city. And I think um, I, in a different life, uh, as a very young person, was in a four-ward system. <laughs> and I got to know people, such amazing people, as Councillor Pitahia Kayo, who was Paula Southgate's equivalent as chair of the, the then Community Services Type Committee. She had strong uh, local connections in the Frankton Dinsel area. Uh, likewise, Councillor Nolene Nuttall in Melville, she, her husband, um, the late Councillor Nolene Nuttall, her late husband was, was a, a church minister, but she in her own right obviously had huge community leagues, was a great campaigner for the Glenview Library, uh, was well known across this, the school system and in that community. Philippa Mahood in Hamilton East Hillcrest Ward uh, was active on the Hillcrest Normal uh, School Committee plus hospice. So they're th examples of three women who <coughs> I don't know if that have got up on a, on a nat more at large or even the current system we've got. They got up into council because at the time they had really strong local um, recognition in their neighbourhoods and were obviously all very approachable. After they got into the council, then they get the name recognition, as Councillor Henry points out, and then after that, any system I suspect uh, would have would have re-elected them um, at the time. So. Um, I certainly um, hope that the is part of a comprehensive report because I think the new council will have to look at the voting system, whether it's at first past the post STV, may or may not have to, to revisit within legislation the issue of my rewards. So I'm hoping that at that time the council will be sufficiently open minded to perhaps go back to the drawing board and further pursue whether or not a three-ward system or four-ward system may actually uh, deliver a better outcome if you're looking for more strong local connection and diversity. The other thing I'd make too is that um, just because someone was elected from a, a ward, uh, you know, the smaller wards, uh, in terms of their intellectual capacity, their vision and passion for the city as a whole, in no way did that electoral system compromise that. Uh, my experience has always been is once people come to the council table, they're just as passionate with what's going uh, in another part of the city that's not in their ward because they see that um, overview. Uh, the, the issue is, um, if you look uh, in terms of this country, putting aside the Auckland local government, which is a different model, uh, we probably will have, I think, about the highest or nearly the highest ratio of population to councillors uh, in the sense, and I think that's something we need to reflect on. We're all happy with 12 councillors at this point, uh, but actually is that necessarily, is that ratio of one elector to 14,516 in the east and one elector to, one councillor, sorry, to 13,000 electors on the other side. So I think those are the, um, you know, the population per councillor. And uh, I think that's something we need to look at, you know, because I think you've got to be really careful why you want an efficient round Excuse the table me. council. Excuse me, Deputy Mayor, I'll move an extension. Do well, I, I don't, I'm actually got 47 sure. seconds left. Yeah. 
Sorry, apologies. Uh, no, no, and thank you for your kindness, but we're on five minutes. Uh, this is good. I'm happy. Minutes. We're on five minutes. We're back to normal. Thank you very much. Sorry. Uh, no, hang on. No, that, that's, that's actually a hint. To, that is a hint to Always close up. I get that before. hint. All I'm trying to say is ultimately next term, I do hope we, we have a, a dispassionate review to try and get the best model that we can in terms of representation and, and local democracy. Thank you for your intervention. <laughs> Mr Mayor. Uh, apologies. Uh, Councillor James. It's always hard following MP Gallagher. Um, look, uh, look, first off, thanks Leanne and team. You've done an amazing amount of work over a period of time, which this is my first time through this and uh, it has been pretty extensive, so thank you very much for your work you've done. Um, look, uh, the amount of submissions received from the public, although um, uh, some of them were very passionate, the amount of them was extremely small. So I think the, um, the silent majority here of house owners and renters is the big voice, uh, whether that's through they're happy or they're apathetic, I'm not sure. But um, they certainly haven't been driven to the point where they feel that they've had to answer and get a change here. Um, the at-large, um, in my mind, would be a big ask for um, most members of the public to have a fair chance of getting voted into council. Uh, like it's already been said, media stars and uh, sports stars. Um, you know, I'm not a media star and I'm not a sports star. Well, sometimes I don't mind I'm a sports star. But, um, you know, I'm probably a poster child for the current system where you don't have to spend a lot of money to get in if you've got a, a bit of a community profile, uh, you know, someone who lives in the community. Um, and saying that, um, I have worked on both sides of the river and doing things in the Western Ward as well. And not once have we ever been asked for a passport when uh, across the border. So uh, you can work on both sides of the, the river because we are city councillors, not east or ward only. We are city councillors. So um, I think in a few years' time, I think a three or four ward system um, will be a probable outcome with our uh, increasing population. And um, I think that would be even fairer than what it is now with the two ward system because you will have members of the public that can actually stand in their own areas they live in and they'll have a far better chance of getting in um, and uh, have a much fairer um, system. So, um, yep, because of the, uh, the silent voice here, um, I'm backing the current system. Thank you. Councillor Rob. Yeah, thanks, Chair. And look, I want to also add to the comments of other elected members to Leanne and her staff uh, for the splendid effort that they've done. I think they've got totally immersed in uh, making sure that they uh, spread their wings sufficiently enough to get the best possible outcomes. And could I also thank the submitters, because I think even though the number of submissions was small, for the most part they were very detailed, some of them very well researched, uh, and I think uh, despite the passion that we might have and that Leanne and her team might have, there was a high degree of passion from, uh, from the submitters. And, uh, and, and that's always good, particularly when the numbers are low. Uh, reluctantly, I'm going to support the motion, um, and reluctantly because when 78% of the submissions, albeit from a small number, tell us that they don't want the status quo, uh, then we have to seriously consider whether or not we've got it right. Uh, and reflecting on Dale's earlier comment that the Electoral Commission um, uh, generally indicates that we are the group of people who know our community best. I think to a certain extent that's correct, but when it comes to electoral decisions, um, I think we need to stand somewhat more aside to ensure that there is no perception of any self-interest in the direction that we are, um, that th the direction or the pathway that we're taking. So despite the fact that we have a low number of submissions, um, I'm still a little bit uh, disappointed that um, we are going against the majority. Uh, and I guess this, this swings slightly to the fact that I'll support the motion is that unfortunately the 37 submitters did not give us a clear direction of which way we should go, whether it's ex increasing the number of wards, which seem to be uh, one of the popular options, or going at large. I think, though, going forward, and let's not wait six years uh, before we start to uh, review 
uh, or, or we, we, we're considering a review, or, or the council of the day are considering that review. Let's not wait the six years. Let's have a closer look, perhaps within the next three years, and let's look at other ways of consulting, because we, you know, to some extent, and I know we tried other ways of consulting, but let's look to what other uh, local government uh, authorities are doing. Whether there are better ways, where the focus groups um, might bring more of our community, the renters and the, the ratepayers in to see if we can find a better way of getting um, sufficient feedback and if that sufficient feedback is, is going to rest on this high, almost 80% telling us that they want some sort of change. Thank you. Councillor Gary? No, Councillor Leo? Everyone else has spoken. I'm just giving you the opportunity. All right. Um, the one wood system would have left mainly the wealthy, wealthy movie stars, sports stars, and of course retired policemen to stand. Um, more wards. More wards. Um, it's likely that with Ham Hamilton's population growth, that the central governments um, will, the electoral system for central governments may well divide Hamilton into three electorates, not two. And at that stage, I think it would be appropriate to reconsider when the opportunity comes up because the public would understand a three ward system and where the boundaries were. But in the meantime, I think the, the river naturally divides Hamilton. We all understand that. Um, and there is, as we all know, a higher population on the east, but with Peacock's opening, that will balance up um, those numbers with time. And um, I think that's important that the numbers don't get uh, are reasonably balanced. Um, of course, when Hamilton's boundaries are hugely extended, um, Hamilton Kirikiri Roa would then need to consider a different ward system and um, I think that would be an appropriate time to do that. So we'll go to the board to vote. OK, we'll vote by hand. All those four, raise their hand. Any against? Carried unanimously. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, Leanne. Thank you, Dale, for coming down. Um, I'll move to exclude the public, seconded by... Sorry. Thank you. I just... Given the teams here, I just wondered, and I thank you all for your thanks, but I would just like to um, the, acknowledge the end team as Brendan Stringer, uh, Natalie Schwartz, Emily Ekram, I'm trying to eyes in the back of my head, and of course Dale, so thank you all. Lovely. Well okay, I move to exclude the public, seconded by Councillor James, all those for, <coughs> any against, carried. Um,